you mentioned the top five prospects in Bunkero, Shet, Jabari, Ivy, and Darren cracked the top five. Let's pick some teams that best fit these players and projecting them in the NBA. So starting with Jalen Duran, in my opinion, I think OKC is the best fit for him. Yeah, I agree. I think OKC and need. I think he would be perfect for them with Giddy SGA, a rim runner, a guy who can run the, run the fast break. He can also be a guy who can just. He doesn't need the ball a lot. He doesn't need the ball to be that effective defensively. They need a big. They're really small. So I think that would probably be like that's that's why I, I, that's why when you asked me like, do you think Duran can go five? I was like, it really just depends on the team that is picked up. I think if OKC. If outside of four, even outside of three, because I don't think they go Ivy. They I don't, don't go It Ivy. doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I'm saying if they get four, five, six, doesn't matter, they're going to pick Duran probably no matter what because that's a guy who fits them. Do you think the Pistons are a squad that he would fit, that his play style would fit them also? I feel like right now I understand you have Marvin Bagley who's been playing very well at that position, but regardless, you still need another big to add. I, don't th- I think if all three of those guys are off the board, they don't go big. They go guard. You think I think they, they would take Ivy early too. Yeah, I, I think because you got Cade and Cade and Sadiq Bay can play one to three for sure. So if you get Ivy, you could put Cade at the one. You could play Ivy at the two. Bay at the three. It doesn't really matter. So I think if Pi- Paolo, I don't know how to say his first Paolo. name, Paolo, <laughs> Chet or Jabari are gone, Ivy, they're picking Ivy no matter what. Okay, or a guard, Ivy Griffin, Johnny Davis, maybe they're they're picking so, a guard. So the center's not not essential to them. And if it's not, not if those Stewart three guys, also. no. Mm-hmm. Who? If I, say, I think during like Isaiah Stewart. Too. Oh like yeah. He, and he plays he plays similar, like he plays strong. I think like right. they'd rather prefer a guy like Chet or Jabari who plays like a four to pair with the fives if they were to mm-hmm. go like that route in the front court. I think Duran all like he's super young too. He's 18, like goes well with Thunder. The Spurs also, like there's been a lot of rumors about like DeJounte like going off, whatever. They drafted Josh Primo last year, who's the youngest player in the league now. Mm-hmm. And they would do something similar with Jalen Duran. I think like chances they get in the top five, maybe probably slim. They're pushing for a play in right now. But you're like um, if they were to out. get in there. Yeah, if they were to get in there and like trade back to four or five or something like that, whatever in whatever situation, I would love Duran to be on the Spurs. So Jalen Duran, now next prospect, Jaden Ivey. What is the best team fit for him? I'll start with you, Ryan. I would say the Pacers probably, although I don't I'll say the Pacers because of first of all, he's from there and like he's his hometown kid and they need like a superstar, I think like that, trying to next to Tyrese Halliburton. But they also have still have Duarte. Buddy Heal, but they could run a small ball and play three of those guys and have four or five really good guards. Um, so I'll say the Pist- uh, Pistons, sorry, Pacers. That's interesting. And you, Riv? I'll probably go Detroit. You know, I think, for, first of all, for Detroit, whew, how quickly they'll be back in if they can just yeah. up, upstart that rebuild process. And then for Ivy to bring in another ball handler, somebody else that can go get a bucket alongside Cade. And you've seen lately Bay developing into his own as a scorer and a defender. I think Ivy would be perfect right in that role. You get three guys who are solid defenders. So I think I think Detroit would be my guy. I feel like the Rockets really do need a true point guard. I like KPJ's oh, game, but he's man. not a true oh point guard. God. He's not. Let's be real. <laughs> now there's Ivy. Ivy isn't a point guard, bro. Yeah, yeah. he's not. But you still, if you're the Rockets, you still need someone to really take that rank. <laughs> so you're gonna play green. You're gonna play green and Ivy. Two. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you need to, oh, listen. Nah. You scoring just, is something that the you just Rockets. Scream, have, you just want buckets. What's wrong with that? Especially yeah, in this wrong. NBA? Yeah, wrong. Right? I, I was actually looking at Tankathon, and really, I, Ivy doesn't fit with a lot of these teams. I don't think he fits in Orlando or Houston. No, you can't okay, go to Orlando. OKC, is unless it, they get rid of Dort. But is it is it wrong to say if Ivy is – Orlando has the pick and Ivy is there. Detroit is the perfect fit. I no, think. but I'm saying if yeah. Orlando has the pick and Ivy's there, they don't just say – we think Ivy can be better. We are, and just move off of the two guards. At what <laughs> no. pick? At what like if it's four, then maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If Orlando has oh, yeah. four. Nah. They already have. You said they have Wendell. You just Trade told back. me he's going to be this, that, and the third. You think they move off of Suggs that early? No, Suggs is going to be the one. This is why you can. They move off Cole for Ivy. Oh, Cole can go. I don't know. Cole can go. I, I feel like the Magic can't draft another guard if they do. No they can't draft another, but they can't draft <laughs> another <laughs> forward either. That would be embarrassing if they draft another guard. I don't know. They can drop another forward if it's Paolo. I was going to say, if it's Paolo, 100% you or can that way. Or Chet. Chet is Chet is just, uh, just, they they I feel like they're log jammed it everywhere, bro. I really do feel like that, bro. It's because they don't have any player that you could like bank on being a star, for sure. And that's yeah. what that, that's what's hurting Orlando. I like Indiana. I put my if they money tra- on Suggs. I, I like Indiana, money on him Indiana to be though. I like yeah. Indiana if they trade Brogdon. That's the thing. Brogdon and Tyrese Halliburton both being there is what's No, I think Halliburton and Ivy is dope. But I think Halle Burton, Ivy, and Brogdon, ah, I mean, I would like it, but I wouldn't love it. I like, I feel like Halle Burton, even Sacramento, Fox, and Ivy. No. 
They, they just, can't. They, no, no way they could draft more guards. No, I swear bro, if they draft the guard, I'll be better. <laughs> no Fox, way. And Fox hey, and they had to trade Halliburton sense. because that. That's Facts. a real, but that's but the thing is, Ivy isn't a Halliburton. That's a real two guard. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody who's like he doesn't like he's not a Halliburton. He's a real two guard. So I think. And then the Davion pick also the last. Yeah, year no, that pick like is kind of yeah. That pick they need is, a defense. I understand it from I mean, that you sense, need but defense. you're right. They had so many guards. Too many next, guards. next prospect, Jabari Smith Jr. I don't even know. Um, the teams to pick from. I'll just talk about the top top five because you know he's going to be top three pick. Orlando, Houston, Detroit, OKC, Indiana. I would go Detroit. OKC, probably Houston would be the three teams. I think Houston's one. No, I didn't put it in order. Oh, I was just saying those okay. are three. I think or, uh, uh, OKC doesn't have a four or five that's really bankable. Jabari Smith fits in right there. Detroit also, Bagley's he's been good, but I think you can kind of. He's replaced. Yeah, you still pick Smith at mm-hmm. that pick. In Houston, obviously, they don't Indiana have a doesn't answer four. the conversation at all. Especially oh, I'm with sorry. Com- in, yeah, Indiana say, is also another team. Especially but, with Miles Turner being on the trade block, that'd just be another avenue to, to I mean, push you can off. keep him at this you point. Could, you definitely could, but. You don't think Jalen Smith is similar? Sticks. <laughs> <laughs> the king. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you just take the, the potential in, in Jabari at that point, though. I understand what you're saying, but Jalen, it's he's expendable. Yes, like you just got him. He's been playing I don't really know. serviceable he's been playing for good. you. Jabari Smith is a tough player for me to evaluate. Me too. Like all, all these top three guys are pretty tough for me to evaluate. I, I think Jabari Smith. I mean, he's a stretch four to me. He reminds me offensively, at least, of like Jaron Jackson, and yeah, he's gonna yeah occupy like a similar role to him. Yeah, I don't know if that. I don't know. He's so slow. I, I, I is he though? Like you watch him, he strides on. He looks like Giannis when he goes coast to coast. Half yeah, time. like I don't freak. like him. I, I never had him at number one. Like for me, he was never in my eyes the number one pick. But I do think like in the right situation, he could have that similar impact. But it's just a weird like. It was a lot of eyes on him. He did carry Auburn, so I guess the hype mm. kept trending, trending upward. But there's a lot of holes in his game. I think more than the other two in front of him or below yeah. him, in my opinion. Yeah, he like athletically. He's I think he's exceptional. And he's a really good outside shooter. His percentages are good, but he shoots so many like off balance shots. But he's so good at them. That's yeah. why like I see the Jaron Jackson thing. So it makes so much sense. But like I've come to realization like that is not as confirmed sustainable as like Chet's potential and Boncaro's like is the lo- lowest floor for or highest floor. Excuse me for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, so, like, I, agree. I, I agree with that. So I I think for me Jabari Smith at least the best fit wise is uh, I see Houston a lot, Which and I think sense. he's the perfect like Christian Wood replacement as well. Mm-hmm. If like they, for, end up, they end up moving off of him. For the rest of the players, we're going to say Houston's going to be a, a huge spot because they need big depth. They so, need talent there. Second, let's start with Paolo Boncaro. For me, I think anywhere Detroit. I, I, I would love him in Detroit. I like Orlando also. I understand they have a lot of big depth, but you pair that with the, the guards that they have. He could possibly elevate their play. You're not relying so much on Jalen Suggs to facilitate that offense. Or, excuse me, you're not relying on Jalen Suggs to be as prolific in that offense. And, and Paolo is going to open up the court for him a little I'm going to say this. Any of those five teams. Facts. He's, he, Facts. It's his skill set, It's he's, he's a big man, and he's probably the most skilled player in his draft. You play him at the four? I would play him at the four. Would you I can play him at the three. Would I'll you play kill him at to the have five. him on the Pistons? If he goes to the, with Cade, him and Cade, oh. bro, that'd be nuts. I can't even. Imagine. I don't think like I don't love the Pistons fit. I really don't. I he he his playmaking. You guys said it before, like facilitating has been so good, especially recently. For mm-hmm. sure, he almost has like don't I want people to react this like a LeBron impact esque impact on like at the four position of what he does for his team and like him and Cade are both. He's gonna be ball dominant. Like I think he could be a superstar and ball dominant wise. And I don't like Cade is Cade plays like Luca. Like Kate is very similar, takes up a lot of usage. Like, would they actually pair well together? Like, I feel like the Pistons wouldn't take Boncaro at one or two. Mm. Mm, that's interesting. I don't so know. You I, think feel like, I feel like I feel like choice, that duo. I feel like that duo could be the scariest duo years to come if it works yeah. out. I feel like that Definitely duo could. reminds me of Tatum and Brown. And for the Pistons, really? it's marketable yeah. too. You, the, the Pistons, who have been a, a franchise yeah. that struggled with bringing fans in, you have two of the more exciting young players in the NBA with. Paolo and Cade, that sells tickets. I mean, the reason why I wouldn't like the reason why I think it's okay because Cade can play off ball. Like he, he, even though we want him with the ball at all times, we want him. Obviously, we want, but he. Because what else he, is their he, option? Yeah, he, but he also will play off ball if need to. He can play off ball. So if pa, pa, uh, Paolo, Paolo, thank you. If Paolo does get opportunities, Cade is fine being that secondary option. But I think you no, know, 
that dynamic of them two, because they like pa- Paolo's skill set is so ridiculous. That dynamic could be like crazy because now you didn't got your one, you didn't got your three and your four for the future, you know, in, in Cade Bay and Boncaro. So I, I would like Detroit for them. I think Detroit, that's that should be the guy for them. My dark horse pick is Portland. Oh, wow. Yeah. If they like sneak up in the lottery, you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Don't I, they have two picks? They have, they're right now, they're projected to have the uh, seventh overall pick. And right now, the pick that is from the Pelicans would go to them, which is projected to be ninth right now. Okay. Portland could be. If okay. they move up in the lottery, I, was say they I think take those two picks and try and move up. I also. think Paolo probably with with Dame because yeah. I think they're going to keep Dame. I don't feel like they're trading him. So with Dame, the, Simons, and team they have, Bon Carroll, they, need to, they, they need to get useful, yep. in my opinion. I think they I think they'll probably pick Adrian Griffin. And they get in the top four. They get all, no, no, they, no, they no, get no, no, because they got okay, two right. picks. I'm talking about like eight or nine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they, they, they are. I, I think Griffin has top four potential, but I don't think he'll get picked top four. Like I don't, I don't think. I think he'll kind of be like the Kaminga this draft. Kind of like his ceiling is yeah. so ridiculously high, but he's not going to get picked where his ceiling is. It's what he is right now. And now the number one, Shet Holmgren. What's the best team fit for him, Ryan? What do you think? I think for me, it's between the Pistons and the Magic. For sure. I think the Magic makes a lot of sense. We talked about like how they don't have a guy at four or five or like that's our dude. And I think him and Suggs being high school teammates is under is like it's a little thing, but they were literally like the duo for a yep. couple of years. And like they did everything together. They're from the same place. Like it makes a lot, a lot of sense. And when you get a guy, they have so much youth and so much talent on that roster. Like the Magic could be good. And similar on the Pistons. I think the Pistons could be will be good faster than the Magic, especially with a guy like Chet. Who like lives off ball and offense? You can fit him into so many different systems as long as you have a spot at the four or five, but you have to play next to like a good, really good, like strong player. Like Isaiah Stewart, I think is a good example of that. Yeah, that's good. I think Denver. Detroit. I think definitely with Isaiah Stewart or bah, Isaiah Stewart down low, he can play the four. Even having Cade, having Bay or Orlando, of course, because like you said, Suggs and Shen in high school were dominating. Like religiously, Minahana, I, f- I think that's what their name was in high school, mm, yep. and even in AAU, they they played together sometimes too. So I think they've been teammates for a while. Bringing that connection back is great. In Orlando, they have a guy at the five that they're comfortable with in Wendell, and then with him, you got him, it Jonathan for- Isaac. It doesn't force Sh- yeah, it doesn't, Chet to play the center position they, either. That defensively, yeah. that could be a crazy trio. Isaac yeah. and Chet, oh my! God. If Isaac finally plays, you know. Wagner is almost going to have more Imagine points than him. a starting lineup of, of Suggs. I don't know who's the two, but whatever. Wagner. Um, you you would put Wagner at a two. I don't. I, I don't. I don't hate That's that. That's a crazy He's big, but lineup. He can play the two. Suggs, Franz, Isaac, Chet, and Wendell. Def- offensively, got some work to do, but defensively, defensively. Woo! that's a crazy yeah, defensive like, lineup. I, I actually love the Orlando. They could put out the death lineup if they got to lock somebody down. I like that a lot. And then maybe Cole Anthony is the six man too because I, I feel that. like that's his best role. Yeah, Cole Anthony, he can't be a starter in my opinion. I, I agree with you. I think so. Ryan, uh, quick question for me: Who, who, like, who was your three? Like, I know the the March Madness has been a lot. It's been hard to keep track, of course, but I'm sure you do it because you love it. Who's who's going to be your three sleeper picks if you had to pick three in this March Madness? Like guys who have, I want to say, have upped their stock, or guys who people mm. don't, you know, pay too much attention to, but can make an immediate impact coming to NBA. Yeah, I feel like there's always guys that like will jump into like the mid or early second round from like being like kind of off radars that are like usually older experienced guys um, like Jalen Williams in Arkansas. I think he's done a great job, like really high motor. I think he'll, he's worth like a second round pick pretty early. I think jumping into like first and like kind of higher guys, Mark Williams has been ridiculous. That's a he, fact. Like he's been good all year, but he's been great. And like without him, they might not have gotten to the final four. Duke. They might not have gotten past the second round yeah. against Michigan state. Uh, I think he's been awesome. He has got elite athleticism and like high motor work rate. I think Kennedy Chandler only played twice, but the game against Michigan, I saw so much I love from him. And like I had him sneaking into like 30 almost going into the tournament. And I saw literally one game and like there's just realizations when you watch guys like that. And I'm like, he was really good. I, I could see him like running an NBA offense in the future, kind of like Trey does, but like because they're both small, quick guards, maybe not as good. Obviously, it's hard to be like like that. Um, and then Benedict Matherin is the last one on Arizona. Like he just absolutely I've skyrocketed. So, yo, I've been so high on Benedict Matherin for so yeah. long. Like he's just I don't even want to. Uh, <laughs> he's a freak, dude, he is a freak. he's an NBA wing. You watch him like that's an it, NBA yeah. athlete. It's that, a freak. Is, that is that. I I don't even want to fan, nah, start fantasizing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, just, no, I, I said I would do illegal things for the Hawks to be able to get him somehow. Illegal things. Yeah. Like, so you're an Atlanta Hawks fan. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I see y'all. I've seen some of the Knicks stuff before. I, I'm ready. I'm ready. So who would you go? Like, if, you, if you had a top pick, who would you who would you go? So, For the Hawks? Yeah. Like one, two, or three, you're saying? No, I was, uh, let's say yeah. you go like seven or eight, nine. Uh, depend if like whoever I wanted to be there. Matherin makes so much sense. I don't know if he'd be there that late. Otherwise, I'd say seven, eight, nine might be early, but either Jeremy Sohan or Tari Eason. Like they play like Draymond, Scotty Barnes esque roles in their own ways. I think Tari's more like DeAndre Hunter kind of, especially defensively. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Sohan, I love. Like he is literally like Scotty Barnes and Draymond. I think we need a guy like that, especially defensively, because like we struggle so much. And we need a guy that's just going to impact winning and nothing else. Like, that's all I care about. So, Sohan would be the guy there. So, like, you're looking for, like, win now guys. Like, guys who just impact winning. Yeah, like, the roster's good. Like, even though with the, with the slump from last year, even if we get 9th or 10th and lose in the plan, like, it's still a team that you can be like, that can be a top 5, 6 team in the East next year and, like, win a play another playoff series. So, I would say keep pushing to win as fast as you can with this team, yeah. Is Nate McMillan fired for you? Oh, God. Probably. <laughs> um, if, we lose, if we don't win a playing game, then probably, yeah. Okay, like, I see. So who would he you... had a one good run that gave him the job. And like that's a short amount of time. So you're gonna be on a short leash because of that, I feel like. 